Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal. Lately we've been doing a lot of videos regarding the uh, complicated world, a little bit complicated, of uh, using optical media for digital data archiving. Optical media, stuff like the CDs, the DVDs, the Blu-rays and the M-Discs uh, that you can use not just for listening to audio and watching movies, some people still believe it or not are into physical media for those purposes, but using it for cold data storage. Um, optical media is actually a little bit better engineered than other forms of media like uh, hard drives and SSDs from the sole perspective of data longevity. The, uh, its ability to hold on to data uh, without ideally corruption for a decent amount of time. Now we've looked on this YouTube channel all over the place about the, the differences between CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, archival grade, non-archival grade, and really there are two products that I would say in 2024, if you're looking at using optical media for archival, stand out as worthy of your consideration. One of those is regular good old Blu-rays. This is actually in the first uh, order of mine from Amazon Japan. I am uh, very impressed by the product packaging. I think it's fantastic. These are 100 gigabyte BDXL discs and uh, I'll do a video maybe about what it was like ordering from Amazon Japan, but the spoiler alert is that it was very easy. Shipping was with the DHL Express. It got to me in only four days. And yes, the shipping might cost you $25, but there is a great range of optical media over on Amazon Japan. And I did the mathematics and it was actually still better value for me to shop there than to shop on regular Amazon. Although I'm not based in the US, so if you get the kind of free next day shipping, uh, the numbers might look a bit different for you. But anyway, it's a cool place to, uh, to buy optical media. But that is what I might call your standard optical media. And what does that mean? So CDs and DVDs hold less data than Blu-rays to state the obvious. Um, so I would say for folks looking at getting into data archival, we're really talking about Blu-rays today. Blu-rays range in storage capacity from 25 to 128 gigabytes, but the common sizes are 25, 50, and uh, 100. Uh, 100 is BDXL, and the only manufacturer to date of the 128 gigabyte discs I'm aware of is Sony. Uh, but there's a few different manufacturers in the 100 gigabyte per disc uh, range, like these uh, three layer uh, discs here um, from, uh, from Verbatim, right? So people looking at optical tend to be looking at one of two things. Do I want to go for regular Blu-rays or do I want to go for M-Discs? So I have long been a fan of the M-Disc. I think it was a very cool technology uh, developed by a startup that went bust, unfortunately, but whose mission was to produce optical media or any kind of media for that matter that would allow for the first time ever really ordinary consumers to purchase a form of media that was supposed to last a hell of a long time. Now, the thing about Milleniata is this. They initially developed the DVD and to the best of my knowledge, the patent only refers to their DVD technology. M-Disc was billed as being a rock-like layer using different inorganic materials and they never really said exactly the composition because that was their trade secret. I think that's fair enough. Um, but that was basically what it was supposed to be. Now, the question becomes when we look at Blu-rays instead of DVDs, Blu-rays are also by default inorganic. Uh, we talked before about the difference between the LTH and HTL Blu-ray. Basically, the Blu-ray was uh, developed as HTL, which is the high to low polarity. Then the industry says, hey, why don't we make Blu-rays like we make CDs and DVDs? So this thing called Blu-ray LTH, low to high, uh, was brought on the market and that used organic dyes so that they, the manufacturers could use the same production lines roughly as CDs and DVDs and just change it around uh, for, for the Blu-ray. But that came to an end. Roughly, you can still find LTH discs on the market, but the industry swapped back to HTL. So the question really is, well, what is HTL and how is that inferior, if it is inferior, to what the M-Disc Blu-ray does? And this is where stuff gets a little bit confusing, as I explained in my last video. But the skinny of it is that it seems to be that the normative technology for your inorganic uh, Blu-rays, and actually, even though it's written in Japanese, 
you can actually see if you can see it on the disc. There's a little diagram here on the right where they're showing three MABL layers. Um, and that stands for metal ablative, doesn't stand for it because the letters are different. Metal ablative recording layer. And the idea is that the recording layer is a metal or some kind of a metal alloy, right? Next letter, ablating, ablative. Uh, the same method of recording data is that the laser ablates or uh, rips off a microscopic amount of the recording material. Uh, metal ablative recording layer, and that is a recording layer. So that is the uh, technology. Now, as I said in the last video, we don't really have huge in-depth information about what exactly is MABL, what's the patent there, you know, all the little details that we might be interested in. But something that I noticed is that I found estimates as to MABL's longevity as being in the region of 100 to 300 years. And that really kind of got me interested. I also noticed that when, it, when I looked at verbatim's listing of the M-Disc, their 1,000 years for the DVDs had suddenly come down to it holds your data for a few hundred years. Now, if we're putting the longevity of a well-made MABL in organic HDL disc at 300 years and M discs at a few hundred years, we're kind of almost talking about the same thing, right? Now, why would you want one over the other? Well, there's more manufacturers of regular Blu-rays um, on the market for one. Secondly, they're a little bit cheaper still. So what I've kind of discovered or the kind of conclusion that I've come to is sort of like this. And I know this has been a bit of a kind of just free-flowing information, but the, this is the conclusion. Looking at different archival optical Blu-ray products that weren't the M-Disc, I found in product literature that their advantage was MABL, which seems to be just a pretty commonplace technology used in inorganic HTL Blu-ray. If you want to call it your bog standard Blu-ray BDR or BDDL or BDXL, whatever variant you're going for, that's that. Um, now, I don't know that every inorganic HTL uses MABL, but if you're looking for one that does, there are lots of choice on the market. Um, my feeling would be this, my philosophy about uh, digital archiving is that certainly 100 years, I would suggest, is about the most longevity that matters, right? Because if you look at the long picture of digital archiving, we're preserving data for uh, a period while the technology is in use and not deprecated, right? To store the data, we need to be able to read it back for that data to have any utility and then we're moving it on to the next thing now as i've said before i think that we can expect i don't think that optical media is going to be deprecated anytime soon it's still in widespread use even when it finally becomes deprecated there'll be backwards compatibility which is one advantage over uh, lto using optical uh, because we don't have that intergenerational problem we do with lto tapes and lto uh, generations but 100 years is more than your average human lifespan. And if your recording material is good for 100 years, to me, I would be happy to put everything that I'm doing from this point forward onto regular organic HDL Blu-ray, so long as the packaging said something about MABL and even better if the discs were specifically marketed as being archival grade or they talked about their archival capabilities, which actually these simple verbatim discs do, as well as some Sony discs I've ordered from Amazon Japan. At that point, past 100 years, you know, your average human, your average person watching this, unless you're watching this, you're a child prodigy or you live for a freakish, freakishly long time, you won't be around, uh, but you will have fulfilled, if your data remains good for, you know, the rest of your life on these discs, you'll have fulfilled what I would regard as the key task of digital archiving of preserving your data until the next best thing, the next most sensible option comes on the market. So here's my conclusion. If you are one of the rare people that absolutely has a need to keep your stuff for 1,000 years, and even if, even in this kind of hypothetical 1,000 year MDISC scenario, the obvious retort is, well, you, you think in 1,000 years we're gonna have something to read the MDISC? You have your Blu-ray player. You think there's going to be USB ports in a thousand years. We, the world might have shifted on to quantum computers and then the next thing. So I think it's actually more realistic to think in much smaller chunks of time, like 100 years. And, you know, if you want to use EM discs, uh, they, I, I don't doubt that they're well made. 
that they're specifically made for archival, but having discovered that your average regular inorganic HDL MABL disc probably is good for at least 100 years, my approach going forward is probably going to be just to use that because it's a bit easier to find, easier to source. Might be a little bit cheaper too, but the main advantage for me would be that I can buy uh, buy it in bulk um, in 50 spindles or 100 spindles and have lots and lots of relatively good organic Blu-rays that I think will be good, inorganic Blu-rays, excuse me, that I think will be good for um, long enough that it matters. And I don't really see for the vast majority of the media they'll be archiving. So I don't take back what I said about the M disc being a good tool. Uh, I like their claims, but having looked a bit more in depth finally at the inorganic uh, versus M disc thing, I think for most people, I personally would argue that the uh, regular Blu rays are just fine for the purpose of data archival on Blu ray. Oh, only took me 10 minutes to get there. Sorry for the sorry for the kind of drawn out thing, but I just wanted to make a video about that because there's a lot of thoughts going into that. If you have um, looked at the same question to me and reached a different conclusion, please let me know in the comments. I'm always uh, eager to talk about this, even if we don't have the same opinion. Thank you for watching today's video. And if you want to get more from me about optical media, archiving and other topics, do consider subscribing.